Let's go straight to the phone lines. We kick off this segment with Dark Side Democrat Gazette's own Bob Holt joining us here on Halftime. Bob, how are you on this lovely Thursday morning? I'm, I'm doing well. I hope you guys are well. well we're doing well. And I, I don't know when Maddie T got you called up and get you ready to go, we're having some internet issues with Phil down at Dickie Stevens Park this morning. So we'll see if we can get Phil back in here connected with us. But, Bob, we got a lot of Razorback basketball news that's been coming across with the signing of D.C. Tony last week and then yesterday – adding the newest transfer to this team uh, in Chris Likes. And, Bob, just on the surface with these two, and then we can dive in a little bit more with Chris Likes, but the recruiting job by Musselman getting these transfers is great. And I think you got two really solid guards who could do a little bit of everything. And seems to me, Bob, that they fit in perfectly with this Eric Musselman system. Yeah, Eric, he just keeps reloading. I mean, I don't think anybody in the country works a transfer portal like Eric does. And I know – he and his staff worked very hard, you know, even while they were, you know, um, embedded in the bubble there in Indianapolis. And obviously their focus was winning NC tournament games, and they, they did a great job getting to the Elite Eight. But even while they were prepping for their opponents and, you know, pre- trying to make sure their, their players were were staying, you know, good mentally in the bubble and all those kinds of things, they were really uh, working the transfer portal and I think doing a lot of video conferencing and do, doing a lot of recruiting there. You know, some teams, uh, you know, if, if if they're still playing, their recruiting might suffer because obviously they're they're getting ready for games. But I think uh, Eric and his staff do a great job of multitasking. I guess you'd say because they obviously get their team prepared to play well, but they're also, you know, working that transfer portal because these guys uh, signed with Arkansas very quickly after the tournament ended. And um, yeah, I think they're they're good pieces. I think Eric and his staff do a really good job of evaluating what they need. They could probably have some idea of who might be, be leaving. And, um, you know, yeah, these, these are two really good pieces that they're probably not done, I doubt. And, um, you know, so you lose a lot of great uh, transfers like Justin Smith and Jalen Tate. Now they're replacing them with, with players who might be a little bit different but are probably going to be equally uh, effective in terms of contributing. I want to focus just for a second on Chris Likes because I mentioned yesterday when me and Phil were having the conversation of what does this team need next? Do you want a, like a, a true point guard? Do we need a player like a do-it-all player like a Justin Smith or a true leader like a Justin Smith? And I was really honing in on the idea of getting a, a just a grizzled guy that's been there, done that, that's won big games, and that can lead a still relatively young basketball team. Do you think Chris, like Chris Likes, I almost say Chris Leak, do you think Chris Likes can kind of fill that void of being the true leader, a fifth year senior from Miami coming in here? Is that the is that the is that the type of player that Arkansas is getting in Chris Likes? Well, I think so. I'm not gonna pretend I've scouted a bunch of film of this sure. and everything, but he and both these players had very good stats in the ACC, which is obviously high level basketball. Um it's interesting, you know, five seven player, um, not the tallest guy in the world, but he talked about, uh, you know, Earl Boykins, who um, is known for being one of the smallest players in the NBA and having a very long career playing for Eric at Golden State, and he's on the Arkansas staff. But, yeah, I think I also think when, when uh, you have grad transfers, you know, Eric talks about they're, they're really coming on a leap of faith because it's their last year uh, to play, and, you know, they're looking to really maximize their time and their career and, and you know, have this launch them into a pro career and, so, um, you know, those guys are very motivated. And I don't think it's the easiest thing to come into a new program, no matter how old you are or how many games you've played and become a leader. But I think guys like Tate and Smith were able to do that with this this, uh, this, this year's team. And I think these uh, these new grad transfers could, could do the same. But, yeah, likes he's, he's very, uh, you know, played at a high level. Um, and, you know, and Eric, they don't go players. They don't go after players who don't think you're going to be able to come in and be impactful. Absolutely, thousand percent agree. And when you look at this roster as it stands now, and we're, we're going to take Moses Moody into the conversation because he obviously hasn't declared for the draft as of yet. But now with the news of Ethan Henderson transferring out of the University of Arkansas, do you think that changes the mind of Coach Musselman and the staff to try to go out and maybe see if you can get a transfer big to come into this program and add it to maybe Yola, Kamani Johnson, Jalen Vanover, a Cole, or do you think you might go for another? I got one, two, or three in the positions. You know, they, it's obviously always always good to add some size, but um, it may kind of be like a draft standpoint, sort of mm-hmm. like best of it. I know they're involved in a lot of different players in the portal. I mean, you see Twitter, and it's like 
so and so has Arkansas in his last five choices. They obviously couldn't take all these guys if they all decided to come to Arkansas. But it's like recruiting. I mean, you can't just focus on one or two guys. You've got to focus on a lot. You think fit your fit your program and would and would add to your program. And then you know it's sort of a whoever who commits first or who signs first. You know, with your or whatever. So um, I think it might be add best available player. You know, I, I, Eric also talks a lot about positionless basketball. I think they like versatile guys. Some guys, obviously, I mean, if you're five seven, you're not going to play, you know, a five. But you look at Justin Smith. I mean, he played, you know, if you want to put numbers on, he was like a three four five, you know, small forward, power forward, center. Mm-hmm. Um, Eric and his staff like versatile guys, so they they won't necessarily be tied to well, this guy's a power forward, or he's a, he's a center, or he can only play small forward or wing or something. So um, it'll be interesting to see who they bring in, but I, I certainly don't think they're done yet. Bob Holt joining us here on Halftime. Bob, we've been talking a lot of Razorback baseball up to this point as well in Arkansas baseball, sweeping Little Rock and heading into the Ole Miss series this weekend. We were having some fun earlier in the show talking about just a, an analogy to compare the good guys and obviously the good guys being Arkansas versus the bad guys in Ole Miss. And we'll put you on the spot. Do you have a good analogy? Because you've you've been there, done that with all of Arkansas Razorback sports. Do you have a good analogy like to compare the good versus the bad, Arkansas versus Ole Miss? We've seen like the Dukes of Hazard versus the Hazard County Police. We've seen like Skywalker versus Darth Vader. What's a good analogy from Bob Holt to come talk about this Arkansas Ole Miss game this weekend? You mean like good and evil or something? Yeah, something like good or evil, good and bad, something like that. Uh, he kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> uh, I probably can't. Uh, all right, it's fine. My no. mind's got to go in blank. I guess I'm <laughs> no, I I moving under the pressure. <laughs> That's fine. I was just I thought I did just thought I'd throw that out there. Then we have the Kleenex versus the booger eaters. Yeah, yeah, we've had Kleenex booger it's eaters. Real high class uh, suggestions. Yeah, we're really high class here at halftime. Bob, before we let you go, you're a Green Bay Packer fan, correct? Right. Okay. Yeah. What did you think of Aaron Rodgers hosting Jeopardy earlier this week? I, I got to watch a couple episodes. I think he does a really good job. I read an article where he said that he would like to do it on a permanent basis. And, I, and my first thought was, well, I hope that doesn't mean he's retiring from football. <laughs> but I, I I didn't realize this, but I guess, you know, they, they, they shoot uh, a lot of those episodes on the same day like they might do, I don't know, four or five. I'm not sure what they do. Yeah. Um, but but he said in this article that, that basically um, to be the host, you had to work about 50 days a year to do all those shows. And so he thought he could certainly fit in 50 off days you know, in the off season to, to host it. But yeah, he's a he's kind of a a Jeopardy nerd, I guess you'd say. I mean that in a good way. And he, he's one celebrity Jeopardy, which he admitted is not usually as hard as regular Jeopardy because they don't want to have the celebrities on there and probably have a bunch of questions go unanswered right. or or have everybody be in minus money at the, <laughs> the for final Jeopardy, but. <laughs> um, I think he does a great job. You know, he's obviously prepares great as a football player, and I think he brought that same. Honestly, I thought he brought the same focus and dedication to preparing for Jeopardy, and so I, I think he's done great. I think it'd be cool if he was the host. Heck yeah, Bob! I think we got Phil back here connected with us. Phil, you back here with us, my friend? Yeah, I know we're we're at the end of the segment here, so oh, we got know. time. We pushed the break, so if you got anything, go right ahead, my bud. I don't even know what you guys have been talking about. I've been, well, trying, I've been banging the uh, internet drum here <laughs> at, the, at the at the Travelers Park. A lot of Chris likes, a lot of Ethan Henderson. We talked a little bit of Razorback basketball. Um, it kind of just seemed like where this like does this team need to go after big now with Ethan Henderson transferring? Um, it's Chris. They, like, how about this? How about this? Are they okay the way that they're already built? Do they really? Do they? Do they? Is there is there really a, a position of great need right now? Anyway, you know the basketball team. Yeah. Yes. Let's go with that. <laughs> I think they've done a pretty good job of re- rebuilding the roster. Um, I mean, you think about it, they got the, the big kid uh, coming in uh, from the JUCO, and and they've got Jalen Williams there. I mean, there's I think six nine, six ten there, and um, yeah, I don't. I, I think they. I think they're a very good team right now. But like I said, I, I know an Eric. I, I, I thought if, he's, if, they, if there's a scholarship available, another thing might be. Um, you know, the, it looks like all the, all the transfers are going to be immediately eligible. Uh, it looks like they're going to get that waiver passed by the NCAA this summer. So instead of saying, saying well, this, we really like this guy, but he's going to have to sit out. I mean, I think it opens up their possibilities. It opens up possibilities for everybody, both players transferring and schools looking for players because they feel like they won't have to sit out now. So 
I think as long as you got a scholarship available, you you want to fill it. You know, right. I mean, a lot of it probably depends on Moses. I it's just hard for me to picture a guy who's projected the first round pick coming back. If he comes back, that's awesome for Arkansas, obviously. But um, you know, I think they're definitely going to fill all those scholarships. Well, we'll be waiting. We'll be waiting to find out. That's for sure about Moses first. I think before anything else. Bob, appreciate you. Thanks for uh, jumping on as always. Thanks, Bob. Okay, you got. You guys take care. Bob Holt from the Democrat Gazette. We'll have uh, Kendall Rogers uh, on with us later on from D1 Baseball. Talk Arkansas Ole Miss. You know, this whole situation with the NCAA uh, predetermining the sites for the regionals and super regionals. Think of your Arkansas. That's all going to work itself out. It's going to affect other teams. I don't think it's going to affect Arkansas at all. Uh, don't forget about Wheels RV in Springdale. They want you to seek out everything that the natural state has to offer right now. Explore Arkansas on a new RV from Grand Design, KZ, Heartland, Forest River, Alliance, Keystone, all the best brands and the best prices at Wheels RV. Ask them about the lifetime warranty and the mobile service shuttle. Come in and discover why Wheels RV is the best RV dealership in northwest Arkansas. Five miles west off the exit off of uh, exit 7. 7-